We've missed you. Pour yourself a drink, pop some popcorn, throw those wings in the oven, grab any snack. It is time to catch up over pre-show cocktails, or tea, or water, or whatever. Before the curtain rises at our favorite place, the Stratford Festival. Let's gab about the shows of the 2021 season, the plays, and the cabarets. This, this is show starters with Alexis and Ijoma. Cheers. Cheers. Hi there, my name is Alexis Gordon and welcome to Show Starters. Now we are about to meet with the creative team behind one of the cabarets from the Stratford Festival 2021 season. But before we do, I would just like to first acknowledge the land that we are all digitally connecting from. That would be Stratford, Niagara-on-the-Lake and Toronto. They are on the traditional and ancestral lands of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabek, the Adirondack the Mississauga, the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation, and the Wendat. We are so grateful for their stewardship of these lands, and we recognize the long history of sharing stories on these lands. And also, as the brilliant Sam White and New York City's Women's Project Theatre has shone a light on for me this year, I'd also like to acknowledge our privilege for having the accessibility to the internet, to computers, to devices, whatever we're using, in order to connect with each other, as so many do not have that access or that that privilege right now. Uh, it is something that we do not take for granted to be able to share our stories and our art with you this way now. So today we are exploring the show Finally Their Son, a cabaret of resilience written and curated by the fabulous duo Sarah Farb and Steve Ross. Also performing in the show for their Stratfest debuts are Noah Beamer and Jermaine Kanji. Hello, Sarah and Steve. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Now this will be Steve Ross's 18th season at the festival. Someone needs to get a pin for this man and just a fraction of Steve's incredible resume includes Assassins with Talk is Free Theater, The Grapes of Wrath, Wrath and Fiddler on the Roof, both at the Stratford Festival. And most recently, Steve did his first ever one person play Every Brilliant Thing with New Stages Theater. Welcome, Steve. I think. This Yes, this is Sarah Farb's sixth season at Stratford. Some of her amazing credits include Fun Home with music, Musical Stage Co, uh, Little Night Music at the Stratford Festival, and most recently she was in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. No big deal. <laughs> Welcome, Sarah. Hello, hello. Now let us set the scene. In, in a perfect world, we would be gathered right now, but again, we're very lucky to be Zooming. But if we were pre-show, pre-show, and our pre-show right now in Stratford, where, what restaurant would we be gathered in for pre-show cocktails? What do you think, Steve? Where would you like to be? I'm, I'm going to choose Molly Bloom's because it's wing night, and I'm a sucker for their wings. So there you go. Amazing. What about you, Sarah? Uh... Yeah, Pozzo upstairs, or I know I think Montfort is no longer. It's been it's been a while, but that backyard garden was really something. So okay, we've we've got one leg in on wings night. So everyone at home, get the wings going in the oven, and one <laughs> leg in at Pozzo's, and maybe we have a beautiful garden view. Do you have a bevy with you tonight, then, from from your dream Stratford place? It's on standby. Beautiful. Amazing. And I have an Aperol spritz because it matched my glass. Beautiful. There you go. There you go. Um, so the duo returns. <laughs> this isn't your first or even your second cabaret together. You both co-created the Victory Cabaret and the New Cabaret. Both shows took place at the Stratford Festival as part of the Forum series. Um, what do you love most about working and co-creating together? We complement each other well. I think I think there's a, a healthy dose of neuroses between the two of us. And I would say we're good at um, sort of easing each other's neuroses or inflaming it if necessary. But at the end of the day, we make good choices on songs and participants and we have a lot of fun. We laugh a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a it's always been a good mix. I, uh, I've, I have long been a fan of Sarah Farb, um, and a, a long time ago, I don't know, I don't, I don't know when Sarah, but you did a Ben Folds cabaret. I was 
so long ago. That was more than 10 years ago. More than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I have never forgotten it because you have such poise in a cabaret. And I remember running into you on the way home from a show on my bike one day on the street here in Stratford and saying, we should do something. And never, never in a million years thinking that you'd go, oh, sure, I'd love to work with Steve Ross on a cabaret. And you said yes. And so we sort of, we sort of very quietly went into that first Victory Cabaret, not really knowing what, what would come of it. And, and it, it turned out to be a good match right away. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was just, I, I was so excited you knew who I was because, because, <laughs> You're Steve, like Steve Ross is beloved everywhere. And I was such a huge fan of that production of Assassins and and your song just knocked me out. Like I I still remember you ascending those stairs. Um, so it was it was really like I I probably would have done anything you you yelled at me. <laughs> but it, was a, it was a cabaret. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm I'm glad it was a match. Yeah, you you tricked each other into the romance, and then yeah. you both stayed. That's yeah. beautiful. We had Amazing. to stay for the kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the musical theater baby fans over yes. here. Yes. <laughs> um. So this is your third show. Um, what should we what should we know about it? What are what are what should we feel, think, or learn? Sort of leaving the theater with this show. What's it about? We initially had thought about a sort of a sequel to the Victory Cabaret, uh, because that was a cabaret of hope, as we called it. And the more we thought about it, and the more we thought about how realistic the year had been and how tough the year had been, we were both very drawn to going through the roller coaster ride that this pandemic has been. Uh, we, uh, Sarah and I are both drawn to some darker songs, some real ballad songs, some, uh, some up tempos, of course. But I think, uh, I think this pandemic ran the gamut of emotion from good to bad, to good to bad, to good to bad. That, uh, that I think we, I think we, we were both really drawn to taking people on the journey through it and, and hopefully out the other other end if things keep going this way and things keep progressing hopefully that's what people walk away with is the is is the oh okay that happened and we got through it mm -hmm. sort of a thing we we very quickly changed the the cabaret's name to a cabaret of resilience we really were drawn to that word we found that word to be very descriptive for mm -hmm. us so amazing that journey too of reflecting and healing that i don't think anyone has quite had the time or the energy to do yet um, that can be the best of art is holding up that mirror and letting there be a, a process of yeah healing yeah. and it's it's a bit of a i think when i explain it at least maybe steve feels the same way it's a little bit um tentative to say you know like we're moving through the pandemic um and because it is such a it's such a loaded idea um but in creating this show, in going through the songs and the news clips that we'll be including in interstitially, um, it's it's incredibly healing. It's like to to hear. Of course, we're choosing the songs, we're curating it, but but with the sort of angles and and um, events, big and small. That have happened throughout the year and a half it will it will be um finding the right songs and write the right words to put to those very specific things has has really been fascinating and beautiful and it's it's a really diverse collection of songs that really speak to what i've observed from other people's experience and from my own um so so yeah, it's it'll be great. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it's it's something that we've never experienced before, right? There is no guidebook, so yeah. it'll be so interesting to to look back and see what was written down and what was what hit us. I I, I keep thinking about the moments that touch me, and that I a week later go, I'd better write that down because I bet five years from now I won't remember that that silver lining, that positive note. Uh, what what will be the big picture when we when we leave it? Um, 
and I'm so excited that this cavalry gets to be filmed in that sense as well, that maybe we will have that, that opportunity to look back and go, what? Or also, thank you. Also, I, I think all the moving things, but like you said, every, every inch of the roller coaster. Sarah came up with, with these great, as, as we brainstormed, we came up with all the words, loneliness, loss, confusion, the mourning of the loss of work, the mourning of the loss of people. But, but on top of it, the silver linings and the joy and the, 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 the realizing that there were unbelievable events that we would never have been able to be a part of had this thing never happened. I sure wish it had never happened, but it did. And so everybody was, was, was forced to look at silver linings too. So we, and we, we talked a lot about it. It's interesting to hear people say that they're, that, 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 that they can't find a silver lining in this. And I, I'm, I feel blessed that I can find silver linings in this whole year, because if without them, boy, ew, that would have been really rough. So. And how beautiful that you get to offer it through this show as well. I think that's maybe something people can't name as well. Uh, somehow we're able to make it through day by day and maybe it is just one step at a time. But um, again, the beauty of art can be to help find the vocabulary. I think that's also the power of song. Um, but I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. Um, when did this idea hit you? Did Anthony call you? Did you call each other? When did you go? When did you have that moment or a ha moment of, oh, I have to put this in words? Was it a moment? Was it a phone call? Uh, was it a dark moment? Was it a light moment? The festival reached out to us and we were both kind of like, what is this? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? And then we jumped on a phone call with, with Dave and with Anthony and, um, it, and they sort of expressed their interest in, in reuniting us to do like I think Steve said sort of a sequel to the victory or maybe even a remount um and but but with a lot of leeway as far as what we wanted to do um if we were interested in, in presenting this as part of the season and of course we were we're both we're both tension whores so um we needed, <laughs> we needed to create something um and we I think as Steve said, like we both kind of tilt a little bit dark in our everyday, just 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 kind of the way we float around the, the world. And uh, I think we both felt that um, it would be a bit disingenuous to mount something that was so ostentatiously like triumphant, even though there was a lot about victory that was kind of, you know, a bummer. <laughs> um, it was loss and then and then victory. But we 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 felt a bit more connected to um the events at hand and thought you know it it's possible people are going to want to run for the hills if they see something to do with the reflection of the last year but this feels right to us and so we started down that path and with the intent of honoring that word resilience and and ultimately with the peace reaching a place of of achievement and and reflection and um, and and celebration of what we've all survived. Well, there's something so beautiful about it being a cabaret as your tool to express it. You're not writing a three act right. Chekhov play about the pandemic, yeah. so it's not going to be that. As much as again, there's that balance or roller coaster. There, there is something about the power of metaphor and the power of song to carry and through. And songs that we know, they're, they're songs, they're songs that people who come to this will, will know for the most part. It, they're, they're all musical theater mainly. Um, and, and putting them inside of this context has been very useful. Yeah, really. it, was, it, it excited us. Mm -hmm. It excited us to perhaps take a song from, you know, MAME or, or a show that's, that's, that's way back in the 60s and 70s and and have it through a pandemic lens and hopefully have people think about think about it a bit differently so yeah we 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 were we were very excited we're we're still we're still in the we, we sarah and i love the curating process so much that we tend to draw it a, a bit long we are blessed that we are the last time slot uh so uh we'll be we'll be in uh we'll be in september 
So we've 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 still got some time, which is great. But what we 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 tend to we tend to pick, you know, two hundred songs kind of thing, and then call it down from there. And we're still in that blissful. Oh, I love that song too. Phase. So. So now you are both phenomenal humans, let alone performers and actors. When did writing and curating theater turn into a necessity or an artistic outlet for you? Um, Steve, you've recently just written a play and Sarah, you've been working on a beautiful musical with Britta Johnson for the past few years. How is curating or creating art different for per from performing art for you? I, I have found it incredibly valuable during this past year, especially. Um, it is a true outlet artistically uh, and creatively that w when 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 we all were robbed of being able to be on stage and and realizing what animals we were that we just lived to be on the stage and things and to to express those those stretch those muscles i went through a real mourning period uh that i didn't know i was going through until uh, un uh, until the, until you were in the middle of it and uh and i just and and i i never uh, I never fancied myself much of a writer. I mean, we we had curated these cabarets, and I had loved that, but I'd never written anything before. And then this idea just came to me, and it sort of it created structure for me for for two months. Uh, it was quite incredible how enjoyable the whole process was. The editing process, the the going back over another draft process. All, all sort of different muscles being flexed along the way from the coming up with the original idea to the, well, that this doesn't work, let's restructure it and things. All sorts of muscles being flexed that I didn't A, know I possessed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then to realize there are no real rules, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. So it was, uh, it was, a, it was a big savior for me, this, this pandemic. Now you've submitted your play to a festival. Did it feel like, and it made it, congrats, by the way. Um, did it feel like an audition? Like, did it feel like you were under, walking into the room, sweating buckets, ready to sing your 32 bars? Like, did it feel similar or completely different? It was the weirdest, it was the weirdest set of events uh, to actually email someone and say, hey, here's my script, have a read and see what you think. It once 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 I hit send on that, there was no going back. And knowing that someone was reading something that I had just sat, it's a Valentine to my father, so it, it's a very personal show too. And um, knowing that someone was reading it was a really surreal experience. Yeah, and then and then to have people give you feedback on it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I became an addict. And I and uh, uh, about feedback and I and I started to, to email it to, to different people and say, can you just have a quick read of this? And I just I don't I'm not looking to to, to be praised, but I'm 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 fascinated by this next step of it, this feedback mm -hmm. phase. So, yeah, it was uh, it was very surreal when they phoned back and went, let's do it. And I thought, oh, OK, no. You're, you've clearly you've clearly phoned the wrong person. You've here. misunderstood. <laughs> you, you, you've misunderstood everything. But Steve, what's oh, it called? It's, uh, what's your play called? So we can look out for it across stages across Canada. My play is called Goldfish. Beautiful, amazing. Yes. So it's a, just a very simple two-person show of, uh, about my dad. So yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting to think that this thing exists now in the world so good for you um, Sarah how about you when did writing and curating th theater turn into a necessity or an artistic outlet for you and how does how does it feel different creating versus performing art I was always I, I've always been acting at the same time as doing anything else like I got a, an English degree from U of T um, while I was acting professionally um, and when I wasn't in classes, I was writing. And, and so it's just always kind of been a nice balance. Um, it's the same part of my brain, but it's also a way to exercise uh, artistic creation that I guess you don't really get to with performance because 
I can control the world and I can, I can develop my own ideas. Um, and that's, and I, like, I'm the one, I'm the one in charge at the beginning and um, collaborating with Britta and other, other of my collaborators has been amazing as even, and Steve too, with curation, I'm, I'm very happy working on my own and I'm very happy collaborating um, because it helps me exercise my work ethic. Our musical, my musical with Britta, Kelly versus Kelly, we've been working on for three, I think three years. Um, and it's, it's come such a long way and it was supposed to have its world premiere, but COVID, whatever. Um, but, but we have like our, our collaboration relationship has developed and now we're working on something new and it's just, it's, it just keeps snowballing in a really nice way. Um, how do you hope theater has changed pre-pandemic to now? What will you cherish most coming back? How do you think the room will be different or theater itself being a live or recorded art be different? I think that people of all ages will feel more empowered to speak up if, if something doesn't feel right. I think, I think um, we have allowed for um, equality and um, even distribution of space and uh, importance, frankly, in a in a room. And I think that's great. I I know what it's like to be sort of a younger actor in a room full of heavy hitters and feeling really intimidated to speak up. Um, and and I, I sense that that's, that's not, that's not going to be happening as much. And I also think that companies are, are recognizing the importance of telling all stories and even stories we know in new ways. And it's, it's very, I mean, that's, that's very clearly happening to me. I, but I, maybe I'm looking in the wrong places. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's beautiful and it's important and hopefully again that will that will just be part of stepping back into that room as an audience member as as an actor as a stage manager as an everything right yeah Steve uh yes to all that uh I also think that there is I can only speak for myself about the level of gratitude going back into a room I um uh, the biggest I, I did a I did a Zoom chat on uh, artists and mental health about halfway through the year last year and how things are. And at the end of the interview, uh, Charlotte Gowdy, who we all know, was leading the interview, and she said, "What is the silver lining that you have figured out?" And I I realized what a great job this is. And it's very easy as actors. What's that joke? How do you make an actor complain or just put them to work or what? That's not the joke, but we are, we are real good at, at complaining. Actors are as, as is everyone, as are human beings in general, you know, I've been guilty of saying, Oh my gosh, a two show day. What are you talking about? Or, Oh my gosh, 12 hours in the theater today. I don't want to, I think I want to, I, I want to believe that at least for me, a large part of that is going to be gone because I, I can't, I sort of can't even imagine the feeling that's going to be when I get to step back on a stage. I've I've been in rehearsal halls a little bit uh, with 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 uh, some attempts at, at getting back to things during this year, but when things actually go and there's an audience, don't know how small or big, and I step on a stage and 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 get to do some acting again, I. Um, I, I get a bit choked up thinking about it. I'm uh, uh, the the level. So I what I what I wanted and what I wanted right from the outset of this when it looked like oh okay this is for real and we are going to lose our year and it's going to be awful. Let's let's not lie. It's going to be awful. But what I what I what I bargained with myself was you have to come out of this better. You have to come out of this having learned something. And I think I have, that's yet to be put to the test, 
So I allow both of you to call me up and go, shut up, you said. You, you got it. Answer. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, uh, um, I think that there's, I think that there's going to, I, and I think the gratitude will go hand in hand with what Sarah said about speaking up and empowering ourselves to just have a really different process and process being the thing. I've, I've become so intrigued in process versus product mm -hmm. over this year mm -hmm. because there was, there was no product. So all we had was process and the, the joy of digging in and figuring it all out is what I'm so looking forward to getting back and doing. For sure. Do you have any thoughts on audience and um, our listening skills? If it's been a year of Netflix binging, um, is there any thoughts to how, how you hope audiences will come back, uh, let alone react to live theater? I think people will be noisy. I mean, in a good way. I think they will <laughs> freely react because they they can and what a joy it's gonna it's gonna take it's gonna take some getting used to I think but but it'll be worth the learning curve for sure and I and and the people who are in an audience want to be there they just want to be there uh, as much as I look forward to stepping on a stage and and like Steve I I can't, I can't really let myself think about that because I, I get so overwhelmed with the thought. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make it through performances um, because I'll be so, I'll just be so happy the whole time. So emotional. Um, but, but I think it'll be such collective joy. And I really, really hope that lasts for a while. I hope the gratitude comes both from both ends i i just there's nothing quite like it right like we yeah. have had no sub no actual substitute for it yeah. for a live theater experience in any other way especially when gathering turned into the thing not to do yeah. so to be able to safely do it again i think will just be emotional full stop <laughs> yeah and i don't i don't know that we took it for granted maybe we did but i uh yeah, I don't think it was clear that there was there's nothing else like it mm -hmm. until we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And then we, we just we just crave it. It's one thing to turn the remote on and to watch endless and 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 goodness knows I'm so grateful to have had the amount of, of entertainment that I've had to to see me through. But I can't wait to get back in an audience and see some live stuff. Yeah. And I can't wait to to be on stage for some live stuff. I think the nerves are also going to knock me over, like having to redistribute <laughs> the actual like knee shaking nerves and be like, but I, I had mastered you a few years. Literal back. <laughs> knee shaking. Do you remember in the Fantastics? I was, I mean, that was, that was a scary thing. I, I have stage fright on a good day, but, but like, I was thinking about that moment. I was singing that whatever she sings much more. Is that much it? More. And my, my legs were just quivering, just shaking and shaking. And I said, Alexis, did you see that? She's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I could. I don't think <laughs> no one else it. could. But that, I thought, like, that's how I picture what I'll just, that's just what I'll be like. And, and I, my vibrato will just, will just be a quivering voice. For sure. Um, okay, so there is a saying, when we're done enough, we sing. When song isn't enough, we dance. Um, if your cabaret is tracking these events in these moments, do you to have a song in your lives that has carried you through in the past year that you've blasted and had a cheer up party or blasted and had a cry moment in this past tumultuous year? Since it came out three years ago, there is a Justin Timberlake song, said the very old man with a gray beard. Um, there is a Justin Timberlake song called called Stand, Can't Stop the Feeling. Um, and it has done me proud. I usually manage to find, I try to stay current for my nieces and nephews so that I can talk to them about music. <laughs> so I usually find a song in a, in, per summer that I really like and can say, oh, did you hear that song? As I as my voice cracks and everything. And I don't know this 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 song. I I can I can turn it on at any point, and it helps. And I, I don't. I, I, I cheers to you, Mr. Timberlake. I uh, <laughs> I 
don't understand. I don't understand why. I was asked several times why, why, Steve, but I don't care. I just love it. That's a good dancing tune. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Sarah? I don't know. I I've been asked this question at various times over the pandemic, and um, generally I'm. I listen to to audio books and and you know when, when I need a break from that I'll listen to a podcast so it's it's uh very chatty um but sometimes sometimes I'll dip into sometimes I'll find myself singing in the shower lately it's been um dancing on my own um that's a good one it's a, it's yeah. a great yeah that's a great song <laughs> Um, so, so that I, I, I would like for a while it was, um, ungodly hour, um, Hallie and Chloe, Chloe and Hallie, Chloe. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, you know, I, I dip in and out, but, but for now it's, um, dancing on my own. <laughs> I love that. Well, again, it's it was, a beautiful song. Yes, and the idea that, like, some, again, sometimes words can't express that thing you wanna, mm -hmm. you wanna get off your chest. So music does it for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we go, because the curtain is rising, your show is about to begin. Thank you for the wings and for the chats. But uh, is there anything that you would like to cheers to that you are grateful for in this past year? Uh, amidst the darkness, is there any silver lining or gratitude thing you'd like to cheers for for us right now? Mm. In this year, in this moment, in the show, mm. for the future? Um, I, I don't know if I would have survived without my dog, Andy. So cheers, cheers to Andy. Cheers to Andy. <laughs> How about uh, you, Steve? Yeah, just cheers to... Cheers to moving forward when I just didn't feel like it sometimes, so. Here, here. Well, cheers to making art and spending time with the two of you. I cannot wait to see your show. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> Heck yes, thank you. You did great. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for joining us for this musical episode. Now make sure you go and check out Ijoma's episodes covering the plays from the 2021 Stratford Festival season. But stay well until we meet at the theater digitally or in person again. Cheers.